attach a certain stigma to adoption in the world, and we shouldn't because the same thing takes place uh, for any precious one that someone chooses to love and, and to bring into their family, and that's what God has done Amen. for us. And so, very, very powerful Amen. song and, and a very good way to springboard into the message this morning. I would invite you to turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. You know, when a preacher preaches on the family, you can pretty much figure he's going to make his way over to uh, Ephesians or Colossians because there's a, all, of the, all of the family counsel that you'll ever need is found in the Word of God. Hey. No doubt about it. I would even encourage every single family here, family would be mother, father, and children, I would encourage you to know Ephesians chapter 5, all 31 verses. That's right, all 31 verses, and know them, and appreciate them, and know that they apply to you, to your family, no doubt about it. Today, we're going to be talking about spiritual leadership in the home. Spiritual leadership in the home. Do you think that that ought to be important to all of us? Yes. Do you think that there's a need for a spiritual leadership in the home? Yes. yes, no doubt about it. So please notice with me, Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, beginning with verse 25. We don't mind reading a few verses around here. That's the way we do things. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. You know what? I'm, I'm going to do this. Before I begin with verse 25, I'm going to read verse 18 because to me, verse 18 in Ephesians chapter 5 is the verse that makes everything else make sense. Are you ready for this? Watch this. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. And be not drunk with wine, whereas excess... But be ye filled with the Spirit. May I say this? You can take all of your self-help books and all, I don't care if you bought them at a Christian bookstore or a secular store. If, if there is not an emphasis on being Spirit-filled, everything that I have to say this morning won't mean anything. That's right. Does that make sense? Yes. Because as a born-again Christian, the only way you can do any of the things that, that God would require of you, would want you to do, is that you walk in the Spirit. So... If you, don't, if you don't notice verse 18 and apply it to the whole chapter, then you don't get the rest of it. So that I'm throwing in for free this morning. I'm going to read that again. Be not drunk with wine, where is in excess, but be, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, with that said, now please, considering as a Spirit-filled Christian, verse 25, beginning with verse 25. Are you ready? Husbands, love your wives. Amen. Amen. I like that. That's a good amen. That's a good amen. amen. I'm going to read it again because I love getting amens. Are you ready? Husbands, love your wives. Amen. That's right. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself. I like that. To himself. A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Now, you can sure tell this is written to men. If I can't get you to love your wife, God speaking to you, let me think how I can do this. Love your wife as yourself, like you love your own body, okay? Okay. Notice verse 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Amen? Amen. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, may I say that, that is something that is in the Bible, that you're to leave and cleave, you're to leave your mother and father. Can I just say, this is, I'm throwing this in extra also, okay? Those that have 80-year-old parents with 50-year-old kids that are still at home, kick them out! It's time for them to actually leave and cleave. What do you think? Amen? Well, maybe there's nobody to cleave to, but they still, can, they still should leave, I say. Notice, notice verse 31. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, 
and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Everything is tied into that last verse. Love and respect is found right there in the last verse. Husbands, three times in this chapter, because this is the way you need to speak to men, three times you're told to love your wife. Love your wife. No yeah buts, no well this is my situation, forget all of that, do what the Bible says. Love your wife. Love your wife. Love your wife. But know this, ladies. You're to respect your husband. Amen. You're to respect your husband. That's what it means to, to reference or honor your husband. There's, there's so much found right there, right there, that you can do an entire conference. As a matter of fact, we had a few, a few years ago a love and respect conference for our, our married couples and uh, those that would be soon married. And we wanted them to know this is God's plan. In God's economy, when you do it God's way, God will bless. There's no doubt about it. So, what's going on in the world today? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. We're going crazy. That's what's going on. You know, in Tacoma, Washington, a newspaper recently carried the story about a basset hound named Tattoo. May I just tell you, if you've named your basset hound Tattoo, there's probably already a problem, okay? Okay. Tattoo hadn't planned to go on an evening run, but when his owner shut his leash in the car door with the dog still outside the car, Tattoo had no choice. Fortunately, a motorcycle officer saw the dog and pulled the car over. Tattoo had survived, but not before running nearly 25 miles an hour and being turned over a couple of times. <laughs> Poor tattoo. Can I just say that lots of times life feels like it must have felt like for tattoo for us. Wouldn't you agree? We just seem like we're trying to play catch up. We're being drugged along. And so maybe the last thing that we really consider as we're busy, buried, and behind is the importance of time in the family, stopping, slowing down, and considering this high calling, this very important, very, very, very precious entity called the family. God knows that our relationships are more important than our accomplishments. It's not going to be how much money you make, my friend. It's not going to be how many uh, letters you have at the end of your name. It's not going to be the way people... Uh, remember you on the outside, it's those who know you on the inside that's going to matter, and that begins with your family. It really does. Why? 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 Why are we losing our children by the time they get to junior high age? Why do we not see dynamic youth groups for the most part? Why are we unusual in that here in this valley, we do have a dynamic youth group, and we have, we have young people coming out of our youth group and continuing in ministry and in service and in uh, church. Well, the reason why it's not happening for, most, uh, for the most part, it's because of the breakdown of the family. The mom and dad that you might even see at church and in, 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 in the public is not the same person at home. Amen? Amen. Wow. You know, I've had more than a few times when I've had a young person tell me, I'm just going to say, my dad's a hypocrite. He smiles and he shakes everybody's hands and he tells everybody how great everything is. And he seems like the most angry man in the whole wide world. You, you think that that's a problem? You know that's a problem. It really is. And so we know that we need to say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, help us. Help us to strengthen our families, because if we don't strengthen our families, we'll not be able to strengthen the church. No doubt about that. As a matter of fact, if you're not here with your family, Father, for Sunday school during this wonderful teaching time that Brother Tom is bringing, your, 
you're not strengthening your family as best you possibly can. You say, wait a minute, preacher, I got this to do and that to do. You know what you got to do first and foremost? Be the man of God that God has called you to be Amen. and strengthen your family. Be the spiritual leader that God has called you to be. Amen? Amen. Set the example. Be here on time. No. Shock everybody. Baptists are allowed to do this. Be here early. <laughs> People look at you like they don't know that you'll, they'll wonder if you're, you know, watch broke or something. But do it. Try it. See what happens. So quickly, let's notice three attributes to effective Christian leaders. You see, to be a Christian leader begins in the home. Some of the greatest preachers of all time were failures as fathers. As a matter of fact, Bible students, isn't this true? Have you learned this? Have you figured this one out? In just about every case, as you look at, as you go through the Bible, you see great men of God who weren't such great fathers. Uh, good <coughs> men who had wicked children. Wicked children who then <coughs> have a, a, a child who would recognize that they didn't want to be my father. I'm telling you, there's no doubt about it. Real leadership is not going to be what takes place on the outside. It must begin with what takes place on the inner, inside. So first of all, notice with me, and yes, these two words do go together. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? A leader's love. A leader's love. And there's where we are. A leader's love. Verse 25. Please notice with me. Verse 25. Husbands, here we go again. I'm going to read this a few times, ladies. If you give me a dollar or two afterwards, I'll read it even more. Ready? <laughs> Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. You'll notice here that the whole reason for this chapter is so that we can be reminded that, that the marriage relationship is a picture of Christ's relationship to the church. Amen? Amen. Our Savior is the bridegroom, and we are the bride. Isn't it sad that there are more Christians getting divorced today than non-Christians? Some might say, well, the reason for that is that there aren't that many people getting married. That's even more tragic, isn't it? Mm. We had a missionary uh, stand here and share with us that in the Dominican Republic now, there's less than 10% that are getting married. What is going on in the world today? That is amazing. But you know what? Biblical love, when it is in place in the marriage, big things can happen. Notice the definition of biblical love. The definition of biblical love. So, you know what? What is this whole business of love? You know, you can, you can get warm and fuzzy and make people feel good about... You just got to love everybody. Just love each other. Would you just love one another? Matter of fact, <laughs> um, the word love itself in English is such a strange word when you think about it because we know that it can mean uh, several different things. If you break down the word love uh, in the Greek, you'll see that there are different words that are used. There's a word that has to do with the kind of love that is actually not love, but lust. There's the word that the, the word agape, which is uh, the kind of love that Christ has for you, and then no strings attached love. And there's a, the friendship kind of love. So all of that is 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 brought out in the scripture. But you know what? I think that in too many cases, too many times, especially in fundamental independent Baptist churches, we're afraid to even talk about love. Oh, let's just preach against sin and let's tell people how it is. I'll tell you what, if people don't know about the love of Christ and they don't see the love of God manifested in your home, you're not going to be able to do much. There's no doubt about it. So this agape love is the kind of love that we're talking about. Turn in your Bible to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. They're actually related to 2 Corinthians. Amen? <laughs> they're the same people, as a matter of fact. 1 Corinthians, where do you think I might be going? Chapter 13, very good. How many remember uh, their wedding day when the preacher maybe preached from 1 Corinthians? Anybody? Anybody? The ladies remember? The guys didn't have a clue what was going on. Did they? Like, huh? Well, what do I say now? Uh, what is a vow? 
Jimmy, A-E-I-O, don't know. 